Welcome back, Shalloners. Well, it's time for another challenge. If you're new to this channel, you might not know what a challenge is, but I bet you can guess. It's a Shallon challenge. And not just a challenge like something arbitrary, like can you do 30 push-ups? No, hard no. It's an emotional and sometimes physical challenge where we are trying to level up, right? So now, the time is right. Most of us are on winter break. I mean, I say us like I'm still in college. Let me have this. You are what you eat. <laughs> and now is the time to reinvent. So we are gonna do a winter glow up challenge. And there's a whole bunch of parts to this. So buckle up. But before we get into it, just wanna remind you guys, if you have a love question, find me on my website, shallonlesser.com and click get help. Also follow me on Instagram, at shallonxo for inspirational daily quotes. And I let you weigh in on the next video topic. And please consider donating to the GoFundMe that I set up for a homeless mama who's living in Atlanta with three children. She's living in a motel room. We're trying to raise $10,000 to get her into permanent housing. We are so close, literally $5. Like we have a ton of $5 donations and they add up. Like they're the bulk of the donations and have added up like you would not believe. So that would be amazing. Don't feel like you have to do a lot to see a big result. Cause here at the Chalantourage, we're about working smarter, not harder, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So a challenge, a glow up. I've been very open about the fact that I was a bit of a late bloomer. <laughs> like I really was, I think I did things the right way because what I did in my life is I focused on personality and developing my mind and then developed the physical outer shell, right? Basically, I was a dork. I was a dork and I liked being a dork. It was fun. I wore orange pants and rainbow shoelaces and turquoise eyeshadow and I didn't care because I was focused on pleasing me and having fun. But then I realized I wasn't getting the social result that I wanted. I mean, you know, things shifted. I became not a child anymore. I was like 14 and 15. I was like, oh, I would like it if a boy noticed me and not just like, you know, viewed me as some weird pippy long stockings. So every time I had a school break, summer break, whatever, I focused on reinvention. I used that time to hibernate. I worked out a ton. I spray tanned. I learned to blow my hair out. I brushed up on my makeup skills so that every time I reemerged, I reemerged a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And once you're out of school, it becomes, I don't know, both easier and harder to do that because you don't have these set breaks in your year where you're like, I'm going into my self-development co cocoon. But we really have to make ourselves our own project, right? So I am currently undergoing the Shallon Self-Improvement Project. I'm single for the first time in two years. And usually what I would do when I'm single is just run through boys like Kleenex. I love boys. But I'm just like, ugh, I just, I'm tired and I don't want to do that. And I'm like, then I need to turn inwards and really develop myself, right? Because I don't want to necessarily have a bunch of flings. I want to either, well, you know, no, I'm fine with flings, but, <laughs> but like, I also want to feel good in my body, in my life, in my emotional real estate, in my physical real estate. I want to beautify my space. I just want to be a hundred because we always say dating's not 50, 50, it's a hundred, a hundred, but you don't need to glow up just to get a guy. And that's the point. I'm in the Shallon Self-Improvement Project because I want to enjoy my life and be happy in my life so that when I do decide I'm ready to date, it's not like I need a guy, it's I would like one. I need a little finishing touch for my apartment in the form of a D1 athlete. Hmm, you, what's that you play? Oh, rugby, okay. So there's a few different parts of the challenge and some you might need to do, others you might not, it, that's okay. Latch on to what works for you. So for me, my weak spot right now is my body. It's my body. Now our last challenge was a keto challenge where we were eating keto. I love keto or like whatever. If you didn't want to do keto, you could do whatever works for you. Whole 30, veganism, Weight Watchers, whatever. It's all about you because everybody's body is different and everyone's schedule and biorhythms are different. And if you like cannot get on board with keto, girl, you don't have to do, do whatever works for you. Live your life. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Live your life and be happy. But I like keto. I'm hypoglycemic. So like sugar is like poison for me. I eat tons of it. So keto is a good way for me to reset. And now I need to reset the reset because I have fallen so far off the wagon. It's the holidays. I'm at a party every single night. I'm traveling a ton and it's just so hard. So 
this is my compromise to myself because once the new year hits and there's just the gray endless hellscape of winter i'm going to recommit to keto for sure and force you guys to do it with me but in the meantime i'm going to be doing intermittent fasting which sounds really scary like when i first heard that i was like i don't do fasting because like i said i have low blood sugar and like if you have low blood sugar if you don't eat when you should like you can get you can feel nauseous and like you can get really dizzy like hangry is like a definite real thing for me but intermittent fasting what you know what it is it's common sense it's just common sense when i look back on when i was the absolute thinnest in my life it was right before i moved to new york city i was 114 15 pounds i am like 140 now like i am a not 114 pounds but like I was a waitress. I was a waitress. I was a secretary during the day. I lived at home. It was a glittering life I led. I was a secretary during the day and I was a waitress at night and I would go to my waitressing job. I'm sorry, my, I'm so itchy. This makeup is like making me itch. Sorry. I would go to my waitressing job at five and eat there at the restaurant. I, I would eat as much as I could fit in my body. I would just gorge myself because then I would be walking for like four or five hours doing the shift and I would not touch a drop of food. And my weight, it was melting off me, melting off me. And when I say I ate as much as I could at the beginning part of the day, burgers, fries, dumplings, sandwiches, oatmeal for breakfast. I was like, like a competitive eater because I knew once five o'clock hit, I was not gonna have any more food. And yes, the walking was like, you obviously are gonna like shed more weight doing that, like kind of, it's not even cardio, it's just consistent moving but it truly was the not eating after 5 p.m. And so that's what intermittent fasting is. It's putting at least 13 hours between the last meal and the, and the first meal. Now, some people do it differently. Some people wait until really, really late in the day to have their first meal, like 2 p.m. or something. With my blood sugar, I can't wait that long. I have to eat pretty soon after I get up to kind of get my metabolism going. So the easiest way to fast is to be asleep is be asleep, right? So here's what you wanna do. You can download an app to do this. I use this app called Zero. I'm not getting paid by them. I probably should have reached out and see if I could have whipped up a sponsorship deal, but I just, I'm too lazy. <laughs> but there's like a million apps, or you could literally also use your timer on your phone. It's really not that hard. But what you wanna do is you wanna go in escalations. You wanna go 12, 14, 16, 18, and then back down again. You know, like one day is 12, the next day is 14, then 16, then 18 then 16, 14, 12. Is that how numbers go? <laughs> because that's gonna like keep your body on its toes a little bit and you're gonna be more efficient with calorie burning. 12 hours between dinner and breakfast is actually not that hard, right? If you eat it, if you finish dinner at 8 p.m., which is plenty fucking late to eat, do not eat after that. I mean, eating by 8 a.m. the next morning, like, I'm not even awake by 8 a.m. I don't get up till 9.30. So right there, I'm almost at 14 hours. So if I can stop, if I know I have to get up really early the next day, I'm gonna stop eating earlier. But if I know I'm gonna sleep in, I'm like, okay, I can stay out with my friends a little bit later, have that extra glass of wine or extra roll or whatever it is. But it really, for me, it gives me more energy. It keeps me accountable during what I call nibbling hour. Ugh, nibbling hour. It's like the 9.30, Russell, my ex-husband always told me this. He's like, I could set my watch by it. Like, it'd be 9.30, we're watching TV, and Shallon would get up and drift into the kitchen. And you hear like, gah, 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 gah. like she's rambling around the pantry looking for snacks. And it wasn't until he brought my attention to it that I was like, oh my God, that's so true. Because it was like two hours, hour and a half after dinner. I was just a little peckish. But I would eat, and it would sit in my body and convert straight to fat. Because I was going to bed like an hour later. You don't need fuel that late at night. Humans are meant to fast. Like evolutionarily, that's how we would eat. We're meant to sleep in two different blocks during the day. The Greeks did it like this. They called it the second sleep. Like, because people would go to bed when the sun would go down. There's no electricity and they'd be up when the sun came up. And people would sleep in four hour increments, blocks of four hours. And consequently, they would eat kind of similarly. They would eat a lot. They would kill a, you know, saber tooth tiger or something and eat it. And, you know, they wouldn't, be able to refrigerate anything so they would eat a ton and then coast for a little while like a snake oh yeah so it's pretty natural and honestly the weight comes off 
really fast. And it's also just a good way to become aware of the nibbling hour things that you might do, a handful of this, a handful of that. So you are allowed 25 calories once the fast starts. That ain't much. That's like two jelly beans, you know? Like if you need a splash of milk in your coffee the next morning, right when you get up, but you're not gonna eat breakfast till 10 or 11, you, you keep accountable, you're using Splenda, okay? So don't, you, you become really kind of like meticulous about like that calorie tipping point. And cause it's like, I'm not gonna blow the last 11 hours that I've not been eating for this Dunkin' Latte, not gonna do it. So we're gonna start there because look, we're all home with our families. Maybe we're traveling for the holidays. You're at the airport. To keep keto, to keep Weight Watchers, it's really difficult. And I have the mentality of it's like, well, if I'm off the wagon, I'm fucking off and I'm falling headfirst into a pile of mashed potatoes and gravy. Like, no. So this is something minor and relatively easy to do that's still going to keep me within the range of accountability. And this could also work really well around your family too. Like family, families are full of old people. They eat dinner at like 5 p.m. That's great. Go get that early bird special, girl. But we're not just gonna do intermittent fasting. We're gonna do some other things, right? Because getting our body where we want it to be, whatever your happy weight is, great. You know, if it's 250 pounds, good for you, girl. If it's 150, great. It doesn't matter, I don't care. We're also gonna work on the glowing up, right? Whiten your teeth. Put Crest White Strips or the laser whitening. You can get a laser whitening Groupon for $100. That is a great deal and it will last you literally for years. I do it like once every other year. My teeth are pretty white, but they're like the yellowest they've ever been. I feel like my teeth look like corn. And this is part of the Shell Self-Improvement Project. Whiten your teeth. Next, you're gonna go get your eyebrows threaded and your lip waxed. You know why? Because you should have two eyebrows and no hair below there. The hair should stop right here. Down, no hair. You're gonna get this part waxed too because even like a little hair here can cast a shadow. Like, not like a like a cute shadow, like contour. No, 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 like a five o'clock shadow, like a man has. I don't care how woke you are. I don't care what you say about gender norms and beauty norms. Facial hair is not, it's not the move, girls. It's not the move, okay? Your makeup sticks to it, your food sticks to it. Like, no. And threading and waxing is cheap. And once you like do it a few times, you can learn to like wax your own lip, although just pay for it. We're also gonna work up on our posture. Tits out, shoulders back. The way you know that your shoulders are slumped is that if you're walking and your thumbs, you know, your arms are by your side and your thumbs are brushing your thighs like that, you're slumped. You turn your shoulders back and suddenly your thumbs are pointed outwards. Oprah taught me that. So that's what we're gonna work on. We're gonna lift that chin just a little. We're walking into new situations. Posture is everything. I walk into very scary situations. I walk into parties with like, Kate Hudson is at the table next to me. I'm like, great, fucking kill myself. But I fake that shit and I do it partly through posture. I throw my shoulders back. I have my head up, but also down at the same time. It's just this haughty kind of like swan neck pier. It conveys confidence, even if you don't feel it. Because studies have shown that your body will lead your mind. Your mind obviously influences your body, but the reverse is true. If you throw those shoulder backs, if you stand in the superwoman pose that they say, for a minute and a half, confidence actually biologically increases. You tap into parts of your brain that are associated with positive rewards and serotonin. Isn't that wild? We're also gonna learn to do our hair. God bless YouTube. I don't say that just as YouTube creator, <laughs> but YouTube is almost, my friend said this, she's like, it's the ultimate feminist tool because it makes you realize you can do almost anything that you've been outsourcing. And your hair and your makeup are right on up there. I know you guys want a makeup video. I did not do this makeup, Mac did this makeup, but I went there and had a lesson because I wanna learn myself and I wanna be able to pass it on to you. But I'm trying to do this for the Shallon Self-Improvement Project. I don't wanna have to outsource my makeup every single time I wanna do a bunch of videos. It's expensive, it's time consuming. I hate making small talk. So I wanna be able to do all of this look on my own, right? So I got the tools, I got tips, I wrote notes, I have a notebook, I watch YouTube videos on how to do it. I'm leveling up myself, I'm improving myself. Same with my hair. I go to dry bar and I'm like, I could do this. But here's what you do. You book one makeup appointment at Sephora. Did you know you can have a free makeover? I mean, it's free, but you have to buy $50 worth of products. 
that is nothing at Sephora, right? Like, and it's good. You're going to want to buy some of the stuff they use on you. They're very brand agnostic. Like they're not trying to push Fenty or Charlotte Tilbury, whatever. They're going to do what works for you. And they want to teach you. They also have classes that you can take. I've taken a ton of makeup classes at Sephora. They're amazing. So really look into that or go to the makeup counter at your local mall and book an appointment. Like go to a Mac store. They're bored. They love to do the, I mean, they love it and learn, pay attention, ask a million questions, write down the answers. Same with your hair. Book an appointment at Dry Bar. Ask them, hey, what's the best way to blow my hair out? What kind of brush should I get? And then go home and practice, practice, practice. Don't feel like you have to buy the most expensive makeup. Don't feel like you have to buy the most expensive hair products. You don't. My beauty closet, as from being an editor for so long, I have acquired so much stuff. Like I have a full full size closet just of beauty products and makeup in my house. Maybe one day I'll do a closet tour because it's really fun. Like I let my friends come over and I get drunk and I'm like, go shop my beauty closet. They're like, yeah, <laughs> like take whatever you want as long as it doesn't say La Mer on it, but take it. <laughs> they love it. I'll have like the Shaolin gifting suite. <laughs> but um, I have gotten like very brand agnostic as well. Like I just use what works and sometimes I'll Google something. I was like, oh shit, this is a $500 cream. Or I'm like, oh, this is this says Marshalls on the bottom. Like, who knew? So cast cast a wide net and have an open mind and try a bunch of things. You know, start cheap, and if something doesn't work, go maybe a little bit more expensive, or the opposite. It's Christmas time. It's Hanukkah. It's Kwanzaa. There is a lot of opportunity to put things on your list, right? Santa can bring some stuff. So now we've taken care of the physical right? We have white teeth. We have two eyebrows. We have smooth, shiny, beautiful hair and fabulous makeup that isn't too overdone in that MUA James Charles look because that is not going to get you laid, my girl. No. But we got to do some other kind of stuff. We got to do some other leveling and we got to fill our time while we're not eating during nibbling hour. So we're going to start editing. We're going to edit first and foremost, our closet. I am an editor, a professional editor. I love to edit things. I love to edit people and make them better. And I love to edit my closet and make it better. Go through, try everything on, maybe have two of your friends come over or your harsh sister. Figure out not just what works, but when I say works, what works now today? Not this would work if I lost 10 pounds. This would work if somehow I got breast implants overnight. This would work if blah, blah, blah. It has to sing to you. I open my closet and I want to love every single thing I'm looking at. Maybe I can't wear that until June because it's not seasonal, but I still love it. I'm always going to love this thing. I have like also being an editor, I've been given a lot of clothes and I would always hold on to clothes only because they were expensive. Even if they didn't look good, even if they weren't flattering on my body, even if I never even wore them, but I was like, I have to, it's expensive. You got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. Only keep it if it sings to you. Don't keep it if it's trendy. Ask yourself, is this singing? Does it fit? Have I worn it in six months? If you haven't worn it in the last season, say it's a summer dress and you didn't wear it this summer, it's gotta go. Marie Kondo things. Thank it for its service and then let it go. I realize I keep a lot of things even though they have a negative emotional attachment. Like I kept something that I, like this bracelet that I wore at my wedding for a long time. Like. And it made me, it made me sad to look at it. It hurt my heart to look at it. And then I was like, why do I keep this? Every time I open that drawer in my jewelry box, I feel, I feel sad. My heart hurts. Why do I need to keep this? I was like, well, I wore it at my wedding. I was like, yeah, no shit. That's the point. Like you have so many other like positive things from that day. I mean, I don't know. Bleh, that's a whole other story. But like, do you know what I mean? Like if there's like your old prom dress and you're like, oh, I'm sad. Cause I cried after prom. Get rid of that shit, girl. Things have got to spark joy. Now, we're gonna edit something else. We are going to edit our life. I want you, over this break, to spend some time alone. Alone. Only when we are alone are we allowed to hear what our body and our intuition is trying to tell us, right? Only when we are a little bit still when we lie in the tall grass, like we talked about in our Art of War videos, can we see what is advancing towards us? Draw people out. We are going to edit our energy. We are going to edit the people in our lives that no longer serve us. The reason that 
Yule and Christmas. Yule's the pagan holiday that, you know, the Christians rebranded as Christmas. The reason Hanukkah happens now, it's a time of rededication, is because this is when everything shifts. This is celestially when things shift, weather-wise things shift, animals go into hibernation. Animals know that they need to pull back and start to trim the fat, right? Literally off their body. We need to do the same thing. We need to pull back and be like, what am I not taking into this new year? What doesn't serve me anymore? I'm gonna do a whole other video on this for New Year's resolutions and what my resolutions are and why I've demanded. They are now going to be your resolutions because they're gonna benefit everybody. But for now, we're just gonna kind of plant those seeds, right? Editing, editing, editing. What in my life sparks joy? What do I keep around? Who do I keep around even though there is a negative feeling there? Well, she was my best friend in second grade, so I guess I gotta go hang out with her. No, the fuck you don't. No, you don't. You can say, thank you for your service. I release you with love. That's a whole other video topic about how to ditch a friend we've done many videos on how to cut off toxic friends, but just start to let that ruminate, right? Allow yourself the mental pathway to consider what your life is gonna be like when you streamline it, when you've edited it down, when things are lean and mean and running well. Cause you know what happens in your closet when you take things out, you have room in there, you have room. And so when you go out and you see some, something fabulous, you're like, you know what? I have room for that. I've got a little extra pocket money because I sold my stuff at Buffalo Exchange or whatever. So now I am happy to bring this new pink fuzzy coat on board. Maybe it works that way with people. Maybe you trim out those friends who are toxic. Maybe you trim out that fuck, fuck boy who never actually wants to meet up. Maybe you trim out that Snapchat only dude. Now suddenly you have room in your emotional closet and now you're more open to filling it with things. You see how much you actually have and how much you actually need, right? Maybe I can operate with half as many people in my life and feel even happier. Same with my closet. Look, I'm only left with the clothes I actually love. I want to wear everything in here. Everything I'm looking at makes me happy. Everyone in my life makes me happy now. No one stresses me out. Yeah, there's fewer of them, just like there's fewer clothes. But every person, every garment, makes me better, makes me feel the way I wanna feel, makes me look emotionally or physically the way I envision myself, right? So this is gonna be our challenge. Intermittent fasting, teeth whitening, two eyebrows, and trimming down our lives. Stay tuned for that New Year's resolutions update. It's coming. But like I said, follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO and please consider donating to the GoFundMe. Even if it's $5 or $1, we are happy to have it. I'm going to be going down to Atlanta, I think, at the beginning of the year. <gasps> oh, I'm like so nervous because I just really want to get it right and I really want to get her set up in a situation that is going to be sustainable and last a long time. Like I'm not, this isn't, this isn't just writing a check and cutting a check and be like, good luck. We're going to try to get her some financial literacy classes some job placement we're really we're really gonna we're really gonna try so if you guys know anybody down there who can who can help i would be so grateful i would be so grateful.